thank you for being here and dreaming that another education or another world is possible. Uh, thank you for all the ones who have come from other places to, to join us. Um, so, we have been uh, now almost a week here, and with many of you, uh, and I recognize that we have been doing different exercises of the childlike pedagogy of the question. So, I thought it might be interesting, given that we have um, some time then to discuss and to to think together, to give you some, offer you some few words to, to think about our uh, Freire and the multiple crisis. Like five words, I thought about five words, some are in the book, but they are not the same. Uh, uh, that might uh, be inspiring. And, uh, so, you know, Paul Freire thought that education had to do with the, the literacy process has to do with reading words, but also reading the world. So how can these, uh, these words can, think, can help us to think and to question and to, and to connect to the, to the world and the world in crisis that we are living? So this is just five words I'm going to offer to you. And, uh, and just a few words about each word, and then I think we can uh, we can make this uh, wonderful idea of uh, round tables and dialogue and questioning uh, about what uh, these words might mean or might help us to think. Um, is it okay? Yes. Okay, so the, um, the words, the first word is, I have doubts, which, which is the first word, because it's also with which word to begin with. But I thought I, I should begin with equality, and, uh, which is a very important word, I think, for Paul Freire and, and for today. Uh, but equality, usually we, we put equality in the end, in education, so that we, we say that we educate for equality. But I would like to put uh, equality at the beginning, in the sense like it's like a, an assumption or a presupposition of our educational work, task, or, or teach, uh, in the sense, I would say, equality in the sense that every human being is equally capable of learning whatever she uh, thinks or feels appropriate to know, if we give the conditions so that she can do that. So it's, it's a kind of equality of, of every human being being able to, to decide her learning and her world built from that learning. And this equality is not uh, opposed to difference. This equality is opposed to inequality. So this is an equality that, in fact, is a condition of a good difference. Because inequality usually brings undecided differences. So it's equality not as opposite to difference but as opposed to inequality. So what we don't want is inequality, but equality provides or, or enables or is a condition for good differences or for desirable differences. So this is the first word. I'm just going to say little things about each, wo each word so that if you would like to, to say more or to question or to discuss. Um, the second word is love. Love. And love also not, not just as a personal feeling, not love as in the sense that I love you, I love a person, but mainly the love for education, the love for the position that we, we occupied as educators, the love for the position of someone who is teaching, the love for the position of someone who is learning, the love for the task of being together, dreaming with other words, of being together with the possibility to question the world, to understand the world, to think together. So love, as a, I would say love, love not mainly as a feeling, but as a, as a force, as a, as a strength, as also as a feeling, but as a feeling that the world could be reborn at any moment 
as far as we meet together, we think together, we question together. So love also as a kind of belief that uh, we can have a new world uh, anytime, that the, that the history is not finished, that the world is not complete, that even though it looks today with all the crises we have that the world is in a very difficult and terminal moment, we still can build or create or born a new world. I would also like to bring hope as a third word. In English, maybe you don't know, you don't perceive the difference because in hope in English is both a noun as a verb, but in Spanish or in Portuguese, or in Portuguese that Paulo Freire wrote, uh, hope is a noun. Uh, and uh, Paulo Freire like, created and used and make of hope a verb. So it's the difference between esperanza, which is hope, and esperanzar, which is the verb. So, and, and it's a very nice verb because it means that hope is not just uh, an ideal, it's not just a, a something fixed, it's not just a belief, it's not an opinion, it's not a, a, a thought, but it's, it's something that, that, that we are that we are creating, that we are practicing, that we are putting in, in movement through our educational practice. So it's like if we are, we are mainly, uh, usually in our educational practice, worried about what do we teach, the curriculum, the contents, the aims, the, the evaluations. But this is something else. This is, I, 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 could, I, I could put in the form of the question uh, for me, this is a crucial question for a teacher. So in, in which way and, and in which dimension are we hoping while we are teaching? And are, and are we making it possible for others to hope together? In which way our, our teaching practice or our research practice is, is a hoping practice and, and nurtures hope? So the fourth word is dreams. and. Uh, dream, uh, that's also a noun and a verb, and I know that Paulo Freire wrote a book called The Pedagogy of Possible Dreams, but I would like to suggest a pedagogy of impossible dreams, uh, and I think, I feel the need, especially in this contemporary world in crisis, to affirm impossible <laughs> dreams much more than possible dreams. Because I think that we are a little tired of the possible dreams, that what, what is intended to be possible. And I think that now it's time to fight and to dream in what is said that it is impossible. But I could say that at the same time that is impossible is needed. So this has to do with two senses of the word impossible at least two senses. So there's one first meaning that impossible is used to be said as what is not possible. So it's the lack of possibility. So something is impossible because it is not possible. But I think that there's another meaning, most interesting, more educational uh, sense of the word impossible that has to do not with the lack, but with the excess of possibility, something that is extremely too possible to be real. And, and this I, I remember, just a few anecdotes, I remember in, in the trip that we were making rounds of childhood, childlike pedagogy of the question that give the title to the book that mentioned Gerard. There was a girl, Lara, we were talking about dreams in a community center in, in, in the state of Ceará, uh, in, in a small town. And so we were children and adults talking about dreams and they were sharing dreams. And, and um, the dreams were at the beginning more personal. I dreamed to be a uh, veterinarian. I dreamed to, sometimes were not so nice for us dreams. I need to, I dreamed to be a policeman. I, I, I dreamed to be a guard, all, all these, these things. But then there was a girl, Lara, who in the, after lots of dreams, and we were moving for dreams not only personal, but more 
social, more collective. So th this girl Lara, at, at the moment she said, I dream in a world where everyone could never stop dreaming. I, I dream in, in, in a world where nobody uh, never stopped dreaming. So this is, looks like impossible, right? So, so this is the kind of impossible dreams I think we need to fight because it's impossible, not because it is not possible, because it is so possible. It, 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 it is an excess of possibilities in terms of the kind of world uh, and humanity we could have, but we are still always listening that this is not possible. So th this is the kind of impossibility, just a, f a little example that I think we need and I think that education in this sense, we can talk about more this, but I think education is more connected to the impossible than to the possible. And the last word would be childhood, and childhood in the end, because we usually put childhood at the beginning, and especially when we think about life and about time, we think that childhood is the first uh, stage of our life, especially with the word development that many, many people mention here, the, the Master in International Development. So if we think that, the, that life is something in development, we think that childhood is the first stage of the human development. But I would like to, 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 to think childhood in a different way. And Paulo Freire is the best example to, to think childhood in a different way, even though Paulo Freire didn't especially was concerned about childhood education, early childhood education. Sh he didn't write about uh, the education of childhood, early childhood education. So th childhood as a stage of life was not a special concern. But childhood is a very, very important word uh, to understand Paulo Freire's uh, education and, and life. And I will give just uh, one or two examples. Uh, the first example is one of the prizes Paulo Freire received. He received many prizes, lots of prizes uh, everywhere. But there's one that he especially liked, and for me especially meaningful. When he was uh, 69 years, in the library, a, a communal library in Italy, in, in Toscana, close to Pizza and Firenze, uh, Ponsato, a very small village, he received the prize of permanent child, bambino permanente, bambino permanente, permanent child. So this idea of development was not very praised by Paolo Freire. He didn't think that he needed to evolve or to develop and left <coughs> childhood in the past. He thought that childhood was a matter of present, of permanence. Both, both ideas are very important. Child with 69 years old and permanent child, because this is related to time. I think that for Paulo Freire, also for me, childhood is not a matter of age. Childhood. It's not related to age, as we usually put when we think about life in terms of development. Childhood is about time. So childhood is not about how many years we have, but it's about being in the present. It's about experimenting the present. And this is very important, I think, for education. Because if we are sensitive to the time of schools, and we have remembered in this week many times that school is a time work, etymologically, etymologically coming from the word schole, which means free time. So to make school is to experience free time. And we can, I, I'm, I know I'm saying too many things in, in short time, but we can talk about all this uh, more so that School has to do with the free time. And I know that institutional school now has not to do with free time, and it's quite probably the opposite, because it's all about 
chronological, measured, and productive time. But again, for Paulo Freire, childhood is about time, not about age. And it's about present. And in chronological time, we don't have present. If we look to the clock, we have only past and future. And the present is a limit, a moving limit. If you, if you look to, to the clock, how, how do you say the, the second uh, hand? The second hand is moving, right? So if, if you want to stop it, it will not work anymore. It's not a good clock. The good clock is always moving. So it's saying the past is growing. The future is the opposite of growing. Uh, shrinking. 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 And the present is trying to, it's like trying to catch now. No, now. Mm -hmm. Where is now? Now? No, it's not anymore. Now? No, now. Now? <laughs> now. Now. <laughs> Now, or now hasn't come, it's waiting for us, or if we, if we say it, it's gone to the past. So in the clock there's no present, just a limit. So in the school, if we are very attentive only to the clock and to the calendar and to the chronograms and the program, there's no present. There's past and future. That's why we need to plan, to organize. But permanent child means that Paulo Freire stayed in the time of a child playing, which is the present time. Kronos is an adult time. The child lives in the present. So this is what I would like to suggest about childhood. Not about an age, but about the present time which is not only the time of a child playing, but it's also the time of art. It's also the time of love. It's also the time of questioning, the time of thinking. So, just to finish, something that Paulo Freire said when, when he was given a lecture at the University of Sao Paulo, which is the most important university in Brazil, and uh, it was about human rights and contemporary education. An audience very, very crowded about very serious themes. And Paulo Freire said, one of the best things I did in my life, better than the books I've written, and Gerard already showed us, how many books, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed is the more, most quoted book in the world in education. There's no other Latin American in any field who has written a book most quoted in the world in any field. So he has written quite impressive books, but Pablo Freire thought that there was one thing he had made that was much better than the books he has written, and guess what the thing was? Do you guess? It's no more or less. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, great. <laughs> so <laughs> the way he completed it, but it's close to that. He said, one of the best things I did in my life, of the better, better than the books I've written, was, guess what? <laughs> it's very nice, very nice not to let die the child I was and the child I could not be. One of the best, better things I did in my life, better than the books I've written, was not to let die the child I was and the child I could not be. If you listen to Paula Ferri as educators, I hope this can make you feel things about the child we have been and the child we haven't been. Thank you so much.